You know what that means, right? She stands tall with her hands on her hips. Vertumna is officially humanity's first exo-colony ever! You look out at the flag, feeling dizzy, and silently mouth the words along to what she says next. You remember this moment so well. This is history, kids! She exclaims, wrapping anemone and tangent under each arm. And we were there! Hello everyone, and welcome back to I Was a Teenage Exocolonist. Hey, I didn't stumble over it this time. Last episode, we got kind of into the groove. We went through our first month. We are now in our second month, I believe. Uh, we're a little stressed out. Slightly more loyal to the colony. We got one monies! Hooray! And now we can do a bit of a bit of exploring. Strato Colony. Okay. Appreciate that. Oh, hi there. Who dis? Mars. A sharp whistle interrupts your thoughts. Hey, Garrett. Mars calls out to you. Come here, I have a job for you. You walk over to Mars, who's sheltering from the snow under the ship's overhang. It's so gross here, she complains. This spark snow would ruin my good clothes. At least on the ship we had climate control. Ugh. And Tammy made me some soy sweets, but there's no way I'm going out there in all this weather, she continues. Since you like running around in it, could you fetch them for me? I mean, I could say please. Yeah, fine, why not? Okay. Good! Mars claps. She's probably just down the hill near our quarters. Mars sighs. She's scared to take more than a few steps from the door. All she wants to do is hide inside and make sweets. Kind of reminds me of, uh, Tammy kind of reminds me of Mercedes from, um, the Fire Emblem Three Houses. Okay. Can we, oh yeah, we can just move using the Wasid. There's Anemone. Can't leave yet. <clears throat> I presume we'll be able to at some point. Oh shit, everyone's just kind of over here, okay. How you doing, Dice? Aw, oh, no bravery. Sad. Dice looks at his feet and pretends not to notice you. I'm sorry, little guy. Befriending him might be a little tough. You'd probably have to start as his friend. You find your mom hard at work, mom, setting up the greenhouses with a small construction crew. You've seen these plans pinned to the wall of your family's quarters for years now. These geodesic domes will house the more delicate plants from Earth. Spinach, tomatoes, maybe even fruit. I'm more excited about the tomatoes. She takes a swig from her canteen as you approach. Looking for something to do? She asks. Remember, Garrett, you're responsible for your own schedule now that we've landed. You can decide how to spend your time, so long as it's productive. I really like the tattoos, by the way. Or tattoo that's more of a hair design, I think? She points towards the engineering wing. Actually, that looks like it could be shaved. Uh, in the back half of the stratospheric severed frame. Professor Hal is still expecting you in class, but a well-rounded education includes physical application. You're old enough to help with the work around here. She claps her hand on your shoulder. I've got another minute. Anything you need to know? Ooh, expeditions would be cool, but we're way too young for that. So what are you doing in geoponics, Mom? She looks down and uh, nudges at a sprout growing between her feet. It's green, the color of earth plants. We're doing our best, but it hasn't been easy. I just hope the potatoes and corn can handle the weather here, she says, glancing up the sky. I hear it rains like hell in the wet season. Can we, like, not name these seasons a bit better rather than quiet and wet? I don't know. She takes a long look at you up and down. You're growing fast, Garrett, but you're still too young for real farming. Instead, well, there's a lot of soil that needs to be hauled. Seeing your disappointment, she nudges you on the shoulder. Don't pout. It'll help build those muscles. You'll need them now that we're out in the real world, doing real work. 
Out here, we have to rely on our physical strength. She flexes her bicep. Your mom is really strong. Cool. It's happening in engineering. Hal's teaching classes on life science, engineering, and humanities. If you pass all your tests, maybe he'll let you work there in a few years. Your father thinks you're old enough that school is optional. I don't agree, but I'll be honest with you, she says, gesturing to the fields. We do need every pair of hands we can get. If you want to work with me here in geoponics, I'd suggest studying life science. If you don't have a good grasp of biology and ecology, I'm going to stick you on shovel duty. What can I do in the quarters? If you need a break, she advises. You can visit the lounge and see your friends. But, she warns, raising a finger, I don't want to see you lounging around all the time. You need to work hard, too. What's the garrison? Security Chief Rhett is organizing a sports ball team. You used to play, didn't you, back on the ship? It'll be different here with the planet's gravity. Of all the adults in the colony, Rhett and your mom are the most like soldiers you'd seen on a holovid. For a moment, you think your mom's going to suggest something else, then she shakes her head. You're too young for defense training, so don't worry about that yet. Just enjoy yourself and stay out of trouble. It's going on a command. I think Seek said they need someone to deliver supplies from the depot. They're also setting up a shop there, if you've got some kudos to spend. And of course, that's where Captain Uticott... I mean Governor Uticott works. But you shouldn't bother her. She's a busy woman, and she doesn't have your mother's patience with kids. You try not to giggle. Your mom isn't usually known for her patience. Can I join expeditions? Oh, you're too young to leave the colony. It's dangerous. She shakes her head. Your father would be worried. There's so much we still don't know about the world out there. Let the adults find out. Then maybe you can join them in a few years, when you're older. She gives you a stern look. She isn't going to budge on this one. For now, stay inside the walls. Okay, bye mom! Love you! Let's talk to dad. How you doing, dad? Hello, my little potato. Your dad exclaims, smiling warmly. What have you been up to today? Playing in the fresh air. He breathes deeply and looks slowly around. Vertumna is magnificent, isn't it? You nod. Seasons! He shouts, throwing his hands wide. I missed seasons! Back on Earth, it got much, much colder, and the snow wasn't half as pretty as our spark snow. He sighs, stretching. You just wait until dust season. Both the suns will be high in the sky, and it'll be real hot then. You'll see. Oh god, so dust is the one I'm gonna hate. Got it. My daddy, love you! Alright, she wants her candy. Let's go maybe visit Command, see how they're doing. I don't think this is new. This one is a bit new. The end of one hallway opens into the supply depot, which works as both requisitions office and general store. Beyond it are cavernous warehouses stacked high with supplies from Earth, now being gradually unpacked and distributed. Nothing new. Nothing new, okay. Is there no one here I can talk to or do anything? <clears throat> I guess not. Can't help with supply runs then. Hey, Tammy. Tammy is staring obliviously at the sky, smiling to herself. She startles as you approach. Oh, hello, Garrett, she says, patting her hand to her chest. And do you need something? I'm here for Mars's soy sweets. Tammy smiles at you. Oh, it's so nice of you to help out Mars. She's a very important person, you know. She hands you a box wrapped in pink and yellow scarf. One order of mango soy sweets made fresh this morning. She says, Please tell Mars that she can have the scarf back, okay? She used some of her kudos to nanoprint it for me because it's so dusty here. But I, I think I'm getting used to it now. Tammy smiles again and tucks her hair behind her big elven ears. Yeah, cute. Wait. Is she actually an elf? Oh, we did all get um a bit of a genetic enhancement, so hers could be hearing or something? Mars is so cool, she says fondly. Sometimes she's kind of bossy, but I know she really cares, too. 
You're sweet. What's in the living quarters? Uh, no. Okay. Oh, actually, one quick thing. Last episode, I came across this word, which I'd never actually heard of before. Um, Kresh? Oh, I'd have to look it up again. It was either Kresh or Kresh. I think Kresh. But it's actually, specifically, there's a North American usage and a um, UK usage. Um, you know what? Maybe I will just look it up really quick so that I can actually provide information here. It was really interesting. Okay, so a... I hope you can hear this. Crash. Crash. A North American is a model or tableau representing the scene of Jesus Christ's birth displayed in homes or public places at Christmas, basically a nativity. But in British, UK, it's a nursery where babies and young children are cared for during the working day. So that's obviously what this usage is using it as, is the UK one. But I just thought that was really interesting that it has both a North American and a UK meaning. Uh, and then again, of course, ooh, we can register for engineering classes. Need reasoning five or greater, which we have ten of. So we could do science. Sup, Anemone? Anemone is bumping a sports ball with her wrist, trying to keep it in the air. Heads up, she shouts, and bumps the ball in your direction. Think fast. Do a trick, bounce it back, look out, a ball is flying towards you. Let's do a trick. She liked it. You catch the ball with your wrist, bop it up, and headbutt it back to Anemone. She grins, her gap to smile. Whoa! Nice moves, Garrett! Plus one toughness. You bounce the ball back and forth with her, trying to see how many times you can rally and keep it going. Anemone tells you about the new sports ball court, a proper regulation-sized court, way bigger than the little zero-g one on the stratospheric. Her brother, Calm, is coaching the junior so sports ball team this year. I, I love that it's just called sports ball. He's so great, she says. He's good at everything, especially spiking. He's coaching me to play awesome like him. You should come join us. Well, we unlock sports balls. So that's that's dope. So we could make that our, our activity for the month. Okay, is that everything we can do and everyone we can talk to for right now? I haven't seen hide or tail of uh, Cal, the one friend, or... Um, um, oh, I should get this. Or Tangent. I don't have my persuasion. Shoot. I want I totally want to do this one. Although that would be cool too, but damn. I guess I've unintentionally steered us a bit towards a combat scientist. Still trying to go for like a leaderish aspect, but yeah. All right, here's your, here's your candy. You hand over the box of soy sweets with a smile. Mars takes it and giggles. You're such a good sidekick, doing everything I say. <clears throat> Ooh, sorry. She opens a box and hands you a soy sweet. All right, all right, all right. At least she's not. At least she's not taking us for granted. Your tip, she tells you. Oh, an administrator seeks looking for someone to do delivery jobs for the depot. She says, I don't want to do it, cause like you, running around out there, no. Just go through there, she says, gesturing to the door behind her, and tell them I referred you. I actually kind of do maybe want to do that? Need toughness 10 or greater, or need organizing 10 or greater. Well, we have the toughness. That doesn't say it'll take our time, so maybe I can help out with that. Hello. Chief Administrator- Oh, can we look at your thing? A neat and organized individual who keeps the colony running smoothly. They don't like kids very much. They them. Chief Administrator C greets you at the depot. They look you up and down. Hmm, Garrett. 
You never struck me as particularly responsible or organized. My children never are. What makes you think you'd be a good fit for the position of courier? You didn't realize that there's going to be a job interview. I can carry a lot. Or a card. Who cares? It's just delivering stuff. I can carry a lot. I'm strong for your age, maybe. But lucky for you, you're the only applicant this week. You've got the job. For now, anyway. They use their elegant stylus to note this on their hollow palm. Come back in a few minutes and you can help make deliveries. Yes, there will be kudos in it for you if you do it correctly. Ah, that will take up the month, I think. Yep. <clears throat> okay, okay. So we're going to get five kudos out of it, ten stress, some friendship with Mars, perception and organizing would be really nice. We've got no perception. We are not perceptive in the slightest, so that's an option. Oh, you've got more to say, Tams? You do. You see Tammy sitting quietly near the entrance to the lounge. You've known her for, well, your whole life. Back on the ship, you used to play with her, where her study partner used to tease her. Study partner, I think. Tammy was awful, just awful at Earth history. She thought Europe was the same name of an English queen, and the Pacific was a famous ceasefire treaty. Facts go in one of her huge ears and out back out the other. No matter how hard you tried, she never seemed to improve. Her ears perk up, hopefully, when she sees you. Uh, hello, Garrett. Um, <clears throat> I was hoping you could help me out with some homework. Of course. Ugh, we lost a bit of reasoning for that. That's unfortunate. Got friendship with her, though. Oh, thank you. She bounces up and down. You spend a couple hours trying to teach her the difference between exothermic and endothermic reactions. One makes heat, and one absorbs it. Why is this so hard for her to understand? The thing is, Tammy never loses heart when she fails a test or gets an answer wrong. It's inspiring, even though sometimes you feel like you get dumber after studying with her. Yeah, kind of worth. Probably go to class this month. Ugh. I mean, we did agree to help out with the... See, why can't I do all of it? You know, spend some days delivering, some days in class, some days in, um... Whatchamacallit? Sports ball. I wish it was divided by weeks and not months. But, is what it is. Uh, let's see what benefit we get for going to class. I do kind of want to register for the engineering classes. Using Congruence's Holonet scheduling system is almost a test on its own. You feel like a hacker navigating the confusing interface, but manage to add your name to the list of drop-in students. Plus two engineering, plus one organizing. Cool, cool. You're now eligible to join Tangent and some of the older students in engineering classes. So I really hope that by registering for those, signing up to be a delivery person, but not doing those in a month doesn't, like, punish me? Ship's artificial intelligence, a vastly powerful computer system which runs everything from life support to the Holonet archives. She has a sense of humor, too. And she's cute. Um, okay, so study life sciences is going to give us two biology, one reasoning, a uh, lot of stress, and friendship with tangent. Engineering is going to give us more friendship with tangent, two reasoning, one engineering. Humanities, two creativity. Two, so studying gives us friendship with tangent. And 15 stress either way. It's just, do we want two creativity and two persuasion? I kind of want the persuasion. Um, one engineering and two reasoning, or two biology and one reasoning. I think we'll study the humanities. I didn't, wasn't too super interested in the sports ball, other than what its anemone is doing, so, you know. This month, you've decided to explore pre-holographic media on Earth, which is a pretty great excuse to kick back and watch movies all day. It's hard to believe that all movies used to be 2D. Boring. Feels like too much learning to be fun. Okay, we have another card thingy. So, goal is nine. Right. So, 
So we're gonna want to do wondering discovery first words uh, So you want to group them by color from what I remember You want to have an ascending order so it's not like we wanted to do yellow and then blue because we'd ruin our ascending Then we can hit them with a first steps and an anemone's loyalty Which hits us with a overkill of 11 You worked well this month. Plus one creativity. Oh, we could have gotten a better score there. Interesting. Well, three creativity and two persuasion. What are we at for that now? Five. Okay, so now we could have asked for half. This week you had a few more bouts of deja vu. Remembering, remembering what somebody's about to say or do just before they do it. Sometimes they actually do it, but not always. This morning, you were sure Professor Hal was going to trip on the uneven floor in the cafeteria and spill his plate of hash browns. You even told Mars to watch. He didn't, though. As Professor Hal walked away, his hash browns safe for today, Mars called you a liar and a dummy. Rude. At night, your dreams are all mixed up with stuff that you can't, that you know can't be real. You're chased by monsters the size of buildings, only to be saved by strange people you've never met. You're holding hands with someone you love. You're crying as you help lift a shrouded body into the colony recycler. Everything seems so familiar, but when you try to recall their faces when you wake up, they're smeared in your memory like wet paint. I think that's Tammy, based on the ears. But what if? What if those things haven't happened yet, but they will someday? Anytime you try to tell someone, they think you're playing a trick, or that you're sick and need to go to med bay. You eventually decide to stay quiet about your strange dreams. Why? I don't want people to worry. Yeah. Your parents have so much on their minds already. You have a feeling that something is happening at Geoponics that they don't want you to know. God, I hope our crops are okay. You don't understand it, but when they come home at night, they look really sad. You don't want to make that worse. If you just keep going to classes, staying out of trouble, it'll be easier for everyone, yourself included. Late quiet. Hi, Tangent! Tangent is hunched over her hollow palm, frowning and poking angrily at the air. She speaks without looking up at you. Okay, so my first time to actually do a Tangent voice. <clears throat> Professor Hal wants us to- oh fuck, no. Let's try that again. Professor Hal wants us to prep a list of native flora with pictures. There should be a catalog on the colony holonet, but I can't find it anywhere. Tried looking outside, I'll help you find that catalog. Let's make our own list. Dungeon is dubious, but agrees to try your idea. The two of you run around the colony yard taking pictures of all the different vertumnan plants you can find and making up fake science -y sounding names for them, like Wonkius Shrubius and Purplius Gracium. After an hour, you've categorized 51 different species. Tangent... Tan... Tang? Tang. Tang doesn't think it's a very complete list or a very scientific method, but she figures you must have learned something. Two friendship with Tangent plus two biology. Cool, cool. Got anything else for me? Okay, so even if they don't have the dot dot dot, we should definitely click on them again. Sadly, we do not have 20 reasoning, we only have 9. Which is very, very sad. Hooked on your hollow palm. Sad. Tangent sniffs the air. It stinks out here. Not just one stink, either. Every day it's a new stink. Today it smells like... She wrinkles her nose. Like that time the waste reclamation unit broke down. Yuck. You haven't noticed the smell. She sure is sensitive. Or maybe she just likes the stale air inside the ship better. Sup, Anemone! Anemone is running around the sports ball court, touching her hand to the ground at each corner. 18! She counts. 19! When she reaches 20, she collapses into the grass and checks her hollow palm. I'm training, she explains. My big bro, Calm, says I have to get my legs climatized to the planet if I'm going to be team captain like him. Oh, 
Um, do I not have enough toughness 20 or greater? Now, how can I conceivably have 20 in any stat by now? I wonder if the, if the different playthroughs might have like a new game plus. Oh, that's from last month. So, okay. Uh, they could just... He nods at me, but didn't say anything. Okay. Oh, there's Cal. Hi, Cal. So, that'll stay until I decide I'm, I'm able to do them. Anything new? I think these are new, okay. Some of them? No, okay, I don't think these are new. Hence why there's no dot dot dot. Yeah, okay. So nothing new there. Cal is riding around the geoponics gardens on his hoverboard. The board comes to a sudden shuddering stop on the rocky ground in front of you. Cal falls off, but catches his balance before he eats dirt. Hi, Garrett. Uh, real ground is way harder to hover on than ship floors. There are bumps everywhere. Well, we all have to adapt. Yeah! Cal exclaims. Things are actually way, way better planet side. Hovering outside is rad. Look at this! He runs over to a small depression in a nearby hill and presents it like it's something amazing. Look at this! It's a skate bowl! Cool, can I try? Oh, he liked that. Got us some toughness, too. Sure! Uh, but, um, please be careful. Mom says if I break my hoverboard, we can't make another one. You take turns riding around the bowl, trying to get up enough speed going down one side to come back up the other. You don't land any tricks. It's hard just staying on the board with this uneven ground. But it's still fun. Cool. And we need 20 biology to be able to... Uh, advance him up, I guess? Cal runs up to you streaked from foot to neck with purple dirt. <laughs> There's so much space! Me and Anemone just ran for 20 minutes! We never ran down the same path twice! He leans over and braces his hands on his knees, breathing heavily. Wee, she's so fast. Cool. So I guess, uh, you know, getting 20 in whatever their respective stat is, is like, and doing their activity is like ranking up. 20 persuasion. Okay. And Tammy, what, what do you need? Random act of kindness. 20 empathy. Okay. Got 10 empathy, 5 persuasion, 6 creativity. We're apparently not brave as at all, which sucks. Reasoning 9, engineering 3, biology 4, organizing 1, toughness 12, not perceptive at all, 10 combat, 0 animals. That is definitely unfortunate. Sports ball, for the record, gives us bravery, toughness, and friendship with anemone. Braver would be nice. It's also not super stressful, and we are getting pretty high in stress. What does resting give us, other than lots of stress off? Nothing but lots of stress off, and a little bit of friendship with Tammy. Okay. I think we're okay to do one more month of activity before we de-stress. Let's... So maybe do a bit of studying engineering? Professor Hal rubs his hands together as he waits for the class to settle down. He's in a great mood. This must be his favorite subject to teach. If biology and chemistry are the wet sciences, then engineering must be a dry one. But believe me, this class definitely won't be dry. He winks. It's weird. It's not weird, it's funny. You shut up. We'll also be learning math, physics, computing, robotics, architecture, and astronomy. Tangent raises her hand. 
Will we also learn about nuclear engineering? Professor Hal nods. Yes, at a beginner level. We'll have an overview of atomic theory and take a field trip to the engine rooms to learn how our ship's nuclear reactor works to power the colony. Looking for more difficulty. The harder card challenges will keep you on your toes. I'm fine with them not being hard as long... I mean, I wouldn't mind making them harder for more reward, but I don't know if you'd get more reward. I'm kind of just down for them as they are. Does it show us what our max is? No. We kind of just have to figure it out ourselves. So if we... Oh, okay, it only ups this one to two. So if we do discovery, and then first words, and then stress cry, and then the first steps, I mean, really, we could do this either way. Super goal. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have the best possible value. What happens if we swap these? Still 15, okay. Plus one engineering. Oh, and super goal got us more too. Two reasoning, 15 stress, and one kudos. Now at 11 for that. Okay. What's the next month, or cycle, season? That was quiet. Now we're in early pollen. Okay. Everything's a lot pinker. You got anything new for me? No. I'm sorry, I can't talk right now. Tangent says, brushing you off. I'm working on my science fair project. We're going to show them off during the Vertumnalia Festival, which will be held in dust. I have very little time. Please leave me alone. You need a break soon? Yeah, I know. Uh, that's probably going to be this month. What do you want? Leave me alone. Aw, dice. We'll make friends with you at some point, I promise. Nemony runs up to you. <laughs> Hi, Garrett. She huffs, catching her breath. She grins. On the ship, adults are always saying, no running, Anemone, no running. But outside, there's so much room. I can run for five minutes in one direction. Even more after the robo-plows clear the land for farms. We're kind of diversifying ourselves a bit, which is maybe not the greatest. So we can't focus on anyone. Oh, look at you, Tammy. You got pretty far. Tammy's dad is the head of expeditions, which means he's out surveying the jungle every day. This morning, you see her crying in the doorway as he leaves. I don't like when he goes out there, she sniffs after he is gone. But he is so brave, and so are you. And that's why I like you, Garrett. Like you too, girl. What's up, Cal? Uh, have you tried standing in mud yet? Cal asks you. It's the best, most amazing feeling I have ever felt. You look down, and sure enough, Cal's feet are bare and muddy as heck. But dirt and grass feel neat, too. Sometimes the rocks hurt, but Mom says I'll build calluses. You should try it. Pass, my guy. You got anything new for me, parents? Help with animals is 20 or greater, unfortunately. And nothing new there. Oh, I can go into geoponics. I keep forgetting that. Shoveling dirt gives us three toughness, friendship with Cal, five kudos, and 15 stress. Good to know. Sup, Mars? Just sec. Notice, please wear your masks when out of doors during pollen season. Ambient particulate may trigger runny noses, watery eyes, and mild cough. Still got the upcoming event. Nothing new, okay. So yeah, we have to de-stress, unfortunately. Oh, Mars. Ugh, 
I have all of these kudos and nowhere to spend them yet, Mars says, sighing. Seek says the department, the depot store won't be open till next year. How am I supposed to show off how much better and harder I am working, working I am than ev everyone else? God, I couldn't read that for some reason. All right, yeah, let's chill. The lounge is a long, well-lit hall along the outer hull of the ship's midsection. It's strewn with tables and cushions and serves as a communal living room for the tiny one-room spaces every family is assigned. You flop down into the lounge's big bean bag pile with some of the other kids. Cal has a dazed, peaceful look on his face. The air smells so good on Vertumna, and so does the dirt even. You notice his clothes are filthy, but obviously Cal couldn't care less. And then when he bounces in, Holy crap! There's so much space to run around and play in! Calm and Chief Rat set up an outdoor sports ball court, and it is way huger than the old one on the ship! Tangent carefully selects one cushion from the pile and perches on it. The school is expanding in some of the empty engineering bays, she tells you. And we're getting a big new lab to do experiments using local resources. And there's so much to learn about this planet. Anemone rolls her eyes, but Tang continues. Tang continues. We shouldn't. We shouldn't forget our studies just because we've landed, she says primly. Ugh, school, let's play outside. I want to explore the jungle. I miss space. I do kind of want to explore the jungle. Oh, that gave me rebellion, I guess. Whoops. Garrett is right. You hear her over your shoulder. At least we got some friendship with Dice. And you start startled to find Dice standing right behind you. Gah, when did he get here? Did you see those huge beasts in the jungle as we were landing? Dice continues, picking out a thread on his sweater until it unravels. I wonder if there are more out there. You've had less of the deja vu dreams come to life feeling this week, and you're starting to think you'd even imagined it. But suddenly you get a prickling sensation at the back of your neck and remember that Mars is about to enter the lounge and tell everyone to look outside. You stare at the door. Mars walks through it as if on cue. O.M.G. Everybody look outside. They're hoisting a flag over command. She says, clapping her hands excitedly. You know what that means, right? She stands tall with her hands on her hips. Vertumna is officially humanity's first exocolony ever. You look out at the flag, feeling dizzy, and silently mouth the words along to what she says next. You remember this moment so well. This is history, kids, she exclaims, wrapping anemone and tangent under each arm. And we were there took the month off. Um, do we want to forget? I'm happy having the zeros to build off, of, I guess. That's our gear. No. I mean, maybe we'll forget a wondering, sure. We don't need a bunch of them. I don't know which one we're forgetting here. I want to keep crawling. You wake from an afternoon nap. You squint to the pink tinged light slanting through the windows. You must have fallen asleep in the lounge. Tammy's shadow falls across your nest of pillows. Oh, I'm sorry, Garrett, she says, giggling. I didn't mean to wake you up. It's just so nice outside, with pollen sparkling in the sunlight. I wanted to open the windows. You rub your eyes blearily. Ugh, you're having the weirdest dream. Um, since you're awake, you should visit the cafeteria. Antecedent is making a new kind of candy. She says it's made of cotton. Isn't that weird? I have to go tidy the crèche first, and then I'll meet you there. Save some for me, okay? Tammy skips off towards the crèche, humming to herself. Uh, yeah, candy, what the hell? In the cafeteria, Antecedent is cheerfully handing out masses of pink candy, 
puffy and soft like clouds. Oh, Garrett, she says, handing you a wand with some candy spun around the end. Here, try some of this. We used to have it on Earth. You pull off a piece and give it a taste. It's so sweet at first that your mouth puckers. You've never tasted anything so sweet and so real. It's not at all like the soy sweets that the kitchen nano printer can make. It melts in your mouth, leaving a grizzly, gritty residue on your teeth. You wait until everyone is gone, but Tammy never shows up. You look down at the cotton candy in your hands. It's wilted a little from the humidity, but it's kind of like her hair, you think. Pale pink and so soft. You keep some to give her later. You're relaxing in your family's quarters after dinner. Your mom had to run off on some kind of council business. So you and your dad are playing a hollow game together. When you're about ready to head off to bed, your mom returns. You can tell just from the defeated slant of her shoulders that something has gone terribly wrong. Your dad starts to ask her what happened, but she just sighs and waves him away. Oh. Oh, I see. She sits down and takes your hand, holding it between her two strong, dirt-creased ones. Garrett, I'm so sorry to have to tell you this, she starts. Her mouth quivers as she swallows, working on her next words. There was an accident this afternoon, in the creche. Your classmate, Tammy, has died. I wonder if we had not gone for the candy that could have saved her, like we would have been there but like wow yeah I'm glad we uh, de-stressed when we did god damn you try to understand her words Tammy dead that's that's not possible you suddenly remember the cotton candy you were saving to give Tammy pink and fluffy just like her hair you put your hand in your pocket to get it, but what comes out is a sticky, dark red lump of hard goo. You stare at it, your mind blank. Your mom tells you, as simply as possible, that Tammy was killed by an electric shock from a broken hollow projector. It was just an accident. Wow, you know, she was so scared to venture away from the arresting quarters that it's extremely freaking ironic that that's where she died. Oh, that sucks. But she definitely doesn't always die, because we did see an adult Tammy in one of our visions. Hmm. You press her for more, for an explanation. A little girl is dead. Someone you'd grown up with. Someone so much like you. She wasn't sick or anything. You, you just saw her this morning. She was right there. Why? Your mom's eyes are sad when she tells you. Sometimes... There's just no reason why. Damn. Status is mourning. All skills increases reduced by one for three months, and some jobs and actions can't be performed. <laughs> Great! Well, unfortunately, as much as I hate to leave you on such a downer ending, that's a good spot to leave it off for today. So thank you everyone for joining me. If you enjoy this content and want to see more like it, definitely consider subscribing. And I will see you all next time for some more I Was a Teenage Exocolonist. F's in the chat for Tammy.